Hi everyone, my name's Anne Marie. Welcome to Card Making Project 600. So that means there's another 599 projects on my blog using Anna Griffin supplies. Today I decided not to do a really special one, but we're going to do a really special card. And my card is a thank you from me to you. And we are, we're using, if I can get my words out because I'm so excited, we're using a plethora of our Anna Griffin goodies both that have been available in the UK and that haven't been available in the UK so please substitute if you don't have them everything I do use I should put in a detailed list on my blog so please be sure to check that out as well plus there's always extra photos and I might slide in a few extra photos anyway maybe of my crafty room something like that so check it out so I'm going to run through the stamps, the embossing folders and the dies that we're going to use for this card. And believe me, there's quite a lot. But if you miss anything, check the blog. And as I say, please substitute if you don't have them. OK, so the first thing that we're using is from the Anna Griffin Seasonal Summer and Fall Stamps from way back in 2016. This is the stamp we're using. It says, thank you. And this is for the insert, if I remember correctly. So we're using this. This could be substituted if you don't have it because this set wasn't available in the UK, but it was available in the US. So you could substitute that. Maybe the flip stamps. Do you remember those from, I think it was the same year? There was lots of thank you messages on those. They'd work great. So those are the stamps. We're going to use the mini flower dies. We're using the leaves from the mini flower die so we're using the I think it's a lily leaf I'm not going to try and guess them all we're using this set here and this set here so those are the dies we're using for the leaves for the flowers we're using two beautiful trimmings embossing folders and these are the original ones the 12 inch long ones and we're using are they named the tassel border that one and the fabric border that one so we're using them the original as I said because the card we're making is an 8 by 8 inch card so if you make a smaller one just scale it down if you're using the newer sets we're then going to use the Anna Griffin quilling flower dies now I know these haven't been in the UK but I know so many of you do have quilling flower dies so you would be able to substitute those and I'm using nearly all of them. So it doesn't really matter which quilling dies you use, just use them. And then I'm going to use the Ruffle Cut and Emboss Smaller on it die and its shadow layer as well. Okay, hopefully I'll remember to each thing as we go through it. And if I don't, as I say, it's, it's going to be on the blog anyway. So the first thing we need is our base card. Now this is an 8 by 8 inch card. For any of you that have difficulty get them, getting them, I've designed some download kits that are available to purchase from my blog anyway. So you'll be able to purchase uh, the kit to be able to make the card and the envelope. So for anyone not being able to get this size, please check the blog as well. Details will be on there. This is an ivory blank card and I've added my handmade by label at the back using uh, my Anna Griffin stamp. I've added my name and for me today the all important number 600. So it's the 600th tutorial. You don't have to add extras but I do because that keeps me in track and I know which one was for which tutorial etc. So the first thing we need to do, as always, even though we're so excited about making this card, we still have to follow our normal steps. We're going to use a bone folder to make sure we've got a nice sharp crease along the edge of the card. And if you never make any of my cards and you never follow anything that I do, and you always think, oh no, that's not for me or whatever, just please, you know, Use your bone folder to do your creases on the cards because it just makes them look nicer and more professional. So you can see how it stands up nicely. 
and it just you know makes it sharper so I'm using my crease to the top of this card not to the side and I'm going to start off with the inside first as always so I've taken a piece of the Anna Griffin double-sided cardstock because there was um, a collection of 48 sheets of double-sided cardstock and this is going to work very well with what we're going to do today. I've got double-sided tape on the back of it so for any new viewers that's double-sided adhesive tape. It's a flat tape that has a back that you peel off so it's kind of like on a carrier sheet a bit like the Xyron if you've ever used that. You peel it off and it leaves the adhesive behind. So I've cut my square to 7.8 by 7.8 inches and that gives me a nice edge around the outside of the actual insert panel. Next I've used the, let me get the name right for this one, the tassel border and I've embossed a piece of ivory cardstock. I've embossed it two sides to get the embossing pattern on two edges. So you can see that. Now a little trick to be able to get it central, if you look closely one side is embossed and one is debossed. But you can't really tell until now I've pointed it out to you because I wanted it just perfect to both sides. That's where I've used the thank you stamp in the middle from the seasonal stamp set. I've got flat tape on the back that I've just peeled off and I'm going to position this just through the centre of our card over the base layer of the cardstock that we've just added. I can press it down and then I've taken two trims that measure just under an inch wide, sorry, half an inch wide, and more like a centimetre wide. These are trims and from making the leaves on the front of the card, I've just cut them from scrap, really, and I've cut them to the size of the insert and I'm just going to add them at the top and below where we've stamped in the middle. There we go, just to give it a little bit of extra colour, even though it doesn't really want a lot of colour. And that is our insert complete. Now believe me that is going to match the outside perfectly. And we've got our embossing, so we've got a little bit of texture, we've got a little bit of colour, and we've got lots of room for our message to and from. So now we can turn our attention to the front of the card. I'm using my bone folder again, just to make sure that that crease is nice and sharp still. And I'm going to start with my first layer, which is a layer of pink metallic cardstock. Now, I haven't opted to be frugal with this because I want it to cover the card. I don't want it to be just um, on the outside or as a frame. So I'm just going to add that. Oops. Yep, there we go. Nearly central, nearly not. So we've added that to the front of our card. Now this is where our layers are going to start building up. So our first layer, I've used the embossing folder from the Beautiful Trimmings, the fabric border. And I've embossed some gold cardstock and then I've trimmed it to the size of the card. I've got flat tape on one edge and 3D foam on the other. And I'm going to simply add this towards the bottom of the card like so. I'm going to turn the card round and I'm going to do exactly the same for the top of the card and I've embossed it and I've just trimmed it out to the size 
Now you do get the dies with the embossing folds for the beautiful trimmings in the original collection. So you can cut out the shape. So that's our first layer. Our second layer, I've done exactly the same. But I've used the pink metallic cardstock for this. And again, I've used the same embossing folder. But where I've trimmed it to size, and I've left the three ornamental swags hanging, on this one we've got four. So we've got kind of like a crossover. So I'm going to place one over the top of the other, like so. I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to do exactly the same at the other side. Already prepared and just over the top. There we go. Because this card, I think, is a little bit over the top. Turn it back the right way. My next layer... I've used the second of the embossing folders, the tassel border, and I've embossed and then debossed. I've got 3D foam on the back and this was cut to a section of five inches and I embossed one side, then I embossed the other and then I trimmed it out. So that's going to sit over the previous layer like so, press it down. That's the Anna Griffin Gold Foil Cardstock. My next layer, because it is all about layers, I've done exactly the same, but this was on a 4 inch piece of cardstock, 4 inch wide. And again, embossed, debossed, 3D foam on the back, and that's going to marry up with the layer underneath and make lots of layers for us. So that's just the base of our card. How gorgeous is that? All those layers. Next, now this is where our fun starts. So I've die cut lots of leaves and from the mini leaves um, die set from Anna, I've used gold cardstock. Now I have got a little bit of tape underneath those and I just thought... I'll add these first, like so. There we go. Now, I've kind of positioned them and kind of not. I'm not, you know, I'm trying to throw them on the card to make it look as though I've put no thought into it whatsoever, but obviously I have. I'm going to add my sentiment before I add all the flowers. I've die cut the um, ruffle cut and emboss shadow layer in gold cardstock. I've got 3D foam on the back of it. And that's why I've just added the little gold leaves because I want them to go underneath that as a layer. I've then die cut the ruffle ornate layer in the pink metallic cardstock. I've got 3D foam under that. I've then got a sentiment that I've taken from the Thankfulness card um, toppers collection and I'm just going to position that in the centre. Now I'm going to use silicone glue. Now this is um, a clear solid thick glue I'm going to use for the flowers. If you don't have it, don't get too strung up about it, you can use your PVA etc. I'm using this because it will hold them in place as I hold the card up, etc. And I want to be able to show you the finished, you know, finished card at the end. But it is a great glue for adding uh, more than 3D embellishment, shall we say. So I'm just going to add, start adding my flowers. Now my flowers I've created using selection of cardstock from Anna and they're all double sided and it could be from any collection. I haven't really thought too long and hard about it. I have mixed and matched. I've used the quilling dies to create the flowers and I've simply 
just used the cardstock that I have and you can see I've used the double sided with the metallic I've used the metallic to use make slightly smaller flowers and I'm adding all the flowers before I add the leaves so we're just popping them on and not in well I'm saying not in any order I've thought about where how I want it laying out and that's the last flower so now I can add some of the leaves I've got the larger ones that I'm just going to add to <coughs> oh excuse me dry throat so those are the larger ones and then we've got the slightly smaller ones that we've die cut and these are just going to slot in anywhere you think you want to add leaves it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether you ink them whether you have more than you need or you use less than you need I'm just adding them as we go Oops, and I'm thinking just another couple and there we go and I've got some of the smaller ones which I'm thinking would look nice there I have got 3D foam on them but it seems to have just been sat a little while it's a bit like my throat, it's dried up a little bit so I'm adding a little bit of glue just on top of the 3D foam. Extra height and dimension. Those are all our flowers and you can see how quickly that's built up. And it now, see I've been looking down as I've been doing it. I've just looked through the camera and wow, that looks amazing. I'm going to finish it off and I'm going to add a bow just underneath our sentiment in the middle. That was just on 3D foam and that is our card finished and I'm going to quickly show you the inside and hope everything doesn't slip off. There we go, matches perfectly and you know what, it is a great card to suit so many different occasions. It wouldn't go in a normal envelope, you would maybe need a box for this and it just so happens I did a box video quite a while ago um, it was a Christmas special actually showing you how to make a box so you could always check that out I'll look at the shadow boxes they'd work it's a card you would hand to a person it isn't a card that you would put in the post and if you can't make an envelope wrap it in tissue and just add a bow the person receiving it would just love it and I hope you love it because this is a thank you from me to you and for watching me 600 tutorials now the layers in it just sum up all the things that we've created in the last 600 tutorials and I hope that you will check the blog look for those extra photos Look for the photos for, you know, inside and outside. Please share with your crafty friends. Let me know what you think. Have you enjoyed the tutorial so far? Here's to another 600 maybe. You never know, but we will keep going. So it just remains for me to say, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.